You know, ladies and gentlemen, one of the funny things about the industry is that... Not the nice Seb signature right there. One of the interesting nice things is, yeah, you get to be around a lot of product. But there's many times you don't actually even get to open things and experience things. And it's kind of a strange, bittersweet thing, folks. So believe it or not, it's April of 2021. This is my very first box opening of Double Masters regular booster. No joke. No joke, folks. This is my very first box opening I've ever actually done. Oop. Box topper coming out there. Is it two? It feels like there's two cards. I don't even remember what's in the set. So much time has gone by. And um, here we are. My patron, John. John G. And he says, Rudy, let's uh, let's do a box opening. I'm not missing a pack, am I? You know, sometimes these packs will... Okay, just making sure. And, you know, it's one of those situations where it's like, you know, I never even got to open one of these. And that's the side effect of when there's shenanigans or Wizards doesn't do a restock or the rest get dumped to Amazon. So, here we are. I finally get to go back and enjoy this and do this. Yes, folks, you see it right. Thanks, John, for allowing me to crack a box of Double Masters. Enjoy it with the world, and you guys get to see Rudy make funny noises and mispronounce and not know what anything's worth and all that fun stuff that we all come to enjoy. Um, cards, cardstock feels real nice. Good, bright, vibrant colors. Um, I kind of lay hers. Is, oh, man. You know, so many people glance at this card at first. And they think it's a misprint color in the middle. Beautiful looking cards. Treasure Keeper for the first Uncommon. Intruder for the second. Beautiful Mirror Smith for the third. Sword of the Meek. What is that? Boy, I'd love somebody in the comment section below. Put, put the comment about Sword of the Meek in the modern from years ago. Go ahead. Go ahead. So that's right. Two rares. Is it two rares and two foils or just two rares? Good old beautiful Miss Weatherlight Captain. Absolutely awesome. And so two rares. Yeah, two rares, two foils. Okay, that's what it was. And uh, foil common uncommon. You know, the price of this thing has skyrocketed, man absolutely i think these boxes are these boxes are probably going to be over 500 by the end of the year fatal push very nice uh good old jellyfish rudy very nice drowning sorrow ah uh, the vexing shut boy these cards smell different wow the ink smells different on these cards anybody is it just i have wow that smells good vexing ah the pulse from ultimate masters beautiful star and an assembler nice little assembly worker wow weird they have a very metallic it's a very good smell. The cards smell really good. Um, very interesting. <laughs> Bone Picker. Infamous common. Ancient Stirrings. Great common. Wow. Good commons in this product. Gauntlets. Ah, Alabaster Mage. I thought that was an uncommon. Was that downshifted? I mean, pretending I know what I'm talking about. Crop Rotation. Trainee. Rush to Knowledge. Here we go. Well of Ideas. And a Saint. The old guy Saint Draft. Uh, Gate Crash Era, was it? I can't, RTR Era? Our very first Mythic of the video. And, of course, a common, and look at that. Look at that. A foil common Urza's power plant. That is sweet. Black-bordered Urza's land. That's awesome, man. Go oh, with card smoke. I guess maybe it's the, the, the foiling, the metallic. I don't know. The card smell really nice. Quality feels really good, at least in this particular box for cracking today, folks. Uh, not bad, John. Uh, very nice colon. Ah, Lightning Greaves. Great uncommon. Shaman. And the old trap from Zendikar era. And the Lux Cannon. Absolutely cool. I used to love that card. I know it's not super valuable. It's a very, very cool card. Very nice. Ah, give me a restoration. Beautiful art and beautiful capsule there. Boy, only common on common. Golly. Things look, these things pop. That's one thing. You got, you know, wizards and the coloring and the way. They really make them pop, man. Ancient Stirrings, Bone Picker, uh, Star. But look at these commons. Restoration, Star. Great commons. Uncommon. Buried Ruin. Great M12 uncommon. Salvagers. Ah, Reclamation Sage. Cool thing. Ah, the Wooded Bastion. Uh, Filter Land, I think they call them. I always, this was one of my favorite land cycles that's always treated like crap. Just saying it out. Just laying out there. Insect Shaman. And a common construct. <laughs> Another Buried Ruin. That time, uh, Foil. Oh, man. Brings back memories. Tumble Magnet. Golly. What was that? Fifth Dawn? Dark Steel Era? Gauntlets. A lot of really... Can't remember some of this stuff. Splicer, Prism, 
Oh, oh, Imperial Recruiter coming through with the beautiful Mythic. Oh, oh, Master Transmuter. Absolutely stunning lady on this card. Love this card. Look at his arm, man. Dude, that is wild. Alabaster Mage, uncommon from the old, uh, or I guess common now, uncommon from M12. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Abuleti. I'm not going to pronounce it the right way. Ubulet. No, I'm sorry. Abuleti. Very cool card. Did I put a did I put a mythic in the wrong pile? No, I thought it was, I thought there was a third mythic. Man, I, I th this box definitely the financial value of the cards it, it definitely feels very strong now. It really does. Ah, uh, power plant, very nice. Frogify, Dark Steel Citadel, uh, Core Tapper. God, those those artifacts are always so sweet. Ah, uh, Chief of uh, uh, Magic Origins, that's what it was. Ah, uh, Fulminator Mage and Wrath of God. And amazing certain cards like this always hold value no matter how. It's like Swords to Plowshare and uh, Path to Exile. Certain uncommons always hold financial value. It's nuts. And, uh, yeah, it's just always been that way. It's kind of crazy how just some cards, no matter how many times they're reprinted, they kind of just stay at the same price. I don't know, price memory, they're always worth the same couple dollars. Culling, Hex Mage, here we go. And Sunken Ruins for the second filter land. And an Ion Storm. Oh, speaking of the devil. And foil path to exile. It's amazing. These foil paths are always like five to eight bucks. Always. Always. Now there are some like really rare, more promo fancy versions. But overall, that's usually a good rule of thumb. Alright. Yeah, really nice card quality, vibrant colors, and everything. Alright, clone shell goro. Death Shadow coming through with a master of Ethereum. Boy, I'm <laughs> Ethereum. Boy. Crypto world and Ethereum, you know. What? Never see that word the same again anymore. Fairy and a beautiful Tumblr magnet. All right, folks, let's jump right into this, uh, I guess, what do you call this? Uh, a double box topper? Does it say just double? Does it say sealed? Oh, it doesn't say. I was going to say, does it say two cards inside? So we got a double box topper. Okay. So, number one. Okay. Oh, that's right. These are the VIP cards, but they're not foil. That's what it was. Okay. Now I remember. I dude, oh my god, a time flies. That's okay. I remember now because that's why everybody is frustrated. You can only get the foil ones in the VIP, the VIP packs. Very cool. So we did get a mythic. Hey, we got a batter skull mythic. And hey, if, and our rare was a power plant. Can't really complain about that. Very cool. Okay. I gotta lay. You know, it, it's crazy. We deal with so many magic products. It's like, you know, this was just last year, and it feels like it was just a million sets ago. It's so crazy, man. Scepter, very cool. Ah, uh, the Tempered Steel. Sylvan Might for the common, and Pongify, really. Pongify. Yeah, this definitely feels like a... Pro I can see why this product is four or $500 range. Ah, uh, Bobble and the Uncommon. Ooh, Manamorph. So, Manamorph of Power Rangers, Uncommon. Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Ah, oh, Mox Opal. For, oh, whew! Mythic number three, Mox Opal with the Rolling Earthquake. Beautiful little reunion and a Rampager. Wow. Holy smokes. There's a big hit, John. Is Mox Opal still like 50 to 100 bucks or did it come down? A Braid, by the way, Infamous Common. Or I guess, what's that was an uncommon? Uh, infamous card. Uh, Thopter Engineer, Infamous Magic Origins. Rudy on the Weekend, Infamous. Flicker Wisp in your bedroom. Thought Reflection. Very nice, uh... Lore and flavor and theme, you know, the draw two, you know, double masters. And really, flippin' beast man again. Gleaming barrier and a foil rare sun forger. Eh, kind of okay. Nothing dramatic there. Sun forger used to be a thing. I remember back in that Dark Steel Fifth Dawn era, but it is what it is now. Uncommon Genesis Blast, and here we go. Magus of the Abyss and a Glimmer Void. Yeah. Eh, foil fairy, common. And another foil Urza's. Well, these cards have a really strong, kind of crazy smell to it. No joke, everybody. Like, they really have a strong metal smell. That's kind of crazy, man. That's really. But yeah, I can these are probably definitely, unless Wizards releases the new triple masters or something ridiculous. Hey, Time Seed. Very nice. Sundering Titan. I, I just don't see why these things are gonna not go up further in price. And some foil comments. Beautiful. Golly, beautiful cards. That's the only thing, is you know. Until we see the next Masters reprint style product, Expedition Map, Infamous, 
You know, I, I don't really... These things are probably going to keep inflating in value, man. Blood Moon and the Vine Man. I, mean, I used to bash this card in Ultimate Masters. You guys remember that? It's very cool. It's actually gone up quite a bit. Um, Infuser and Automaton. Wow, okay. Four Mythic Box, and you know what? <laughs> Mox Opal, Recruiter, and a Vine Man. Can't really complain about them apples, man. All right, Explore. Skull Masher, Sphinx, and another Sun Forger. And all right, all right, all right. Good old Kembra. Oh, wait, Kemba, not Kembra. Uh, Cat Warrior with some interesting physique going on. Definitely uh, not a recent artwork, but kind of impressive. I mean, you know, I, I, I would take her to Taco Bell. I, I would definitely, we would we would hit the party pack life, man. We, we would give it a swing. We, we would go for it. Not bad. That artwork always kind of made me go, I'm not sure how I feel, but I'm going to just think about it. Invigorate for the millionth reprint. And here we go, folks. Pure Steel Paladin. You know, it's actually not a bad card. I always felt this was a really underrated card for a couple bucks. I'm surprised it hasn't gone up. And the White Command. Not as good as Cryptic and the other commands. Gremlins and Squirrels. Gremlins and Squirrels. Okay. It's Gremlins and Squirrels. All right, come on. Give me something crazy to scream about, folks. Let's see. Here we go. Sphinx. Rampager. Haha, <laughs> Basalt Monolith. There's a nice Reaper. Rage Reflection. Another double card. Council's Judgment. Oh, man. $20, $30 Conspiracy 1 card. What a... Boy, that brings back memories. Man. Angel of Dawn. Beautiful card. Just a common, though. And Bone Picker. Again, just a common. Great card, though. God, there's so many magic sets. You forget. You really don't remember some of the stuff that you look at. Thopter Foundry. Oh, my God. Super ridiculous card. PoE. And there you go. Ether Sworn Canis. Creepy Chick. A little... She needs to get a little more tacos inside of her, but you know what? We can we can Panera Bread it. And uh, Elephant. And Relic Runner. And a Clear Shot. Okay. All right. Um, we got a couple packs left. I don't know. Four packs left. I don't know. Ancient Stirrings. Very nice. Don't know if we're going to hit anything major in the last few. We've already got our... We got four Mythics here. Um, we haven't hit a Foil, really, Foil Mythic or anything. It's possible. I don't know if it's one per box or what. Um, Creepy Rudy X. But, you know... Yeah. It is what it is. And Blasphemous Act and the Maze of Ith for a very iconic piece of history. Very cool to see that pop up here in the Flayer Hulse. Husk. Very cool. Very cool, man. All right. Actually, look. I, I can... I definitely see why the value's here. I can... This is very Goro. Always looks good. Ah, the stance. Well, golly. That was such a big card when I was doing my micros years ago. I think it was Fate Reforged. I sold like 400 copies of that. Ratchet Bomb, and look at that, the Blight Dragon from Scars and Mirrodin. Great card, man, powerhouse. And a Dive Vest for a Creeper card, and a Flooded Grove. Filter Land, Foil Rare, very cool. Still think those are undervalued, I know. The comment section is going, Rudy, well, if you knew how to play Magic the ugly Owing, you would know that card is not very good. Yeah, well, you know what, which head is mine? Think about that all night. All right, here we go. Pain Smith, yeah, one of those chicks that's into pain, be careful with them. Thirst for Knowledge. Ooh, Dark Steel Forge for the very nice Mythic again. Mythic number six with a bird. Not bad. Uh, core Tapper and some Mulch Man action. Cool, cool. Very nice. Very, very solid. Very diversified pools. Not a lot of duplication. Nice creative little, uh, nice good obulet. Very nice. Lightning Greaves. Another Filter Land. Ooh, Sneak Attack. Look at the Mythics. Oh my goodness. Sneak Attack coming in for Mythic number... Seven? Seven? Really? And my... Wow, really? Seven? Yeah, seven Mythics. Oh my goodness, seven Mythics and twenty. I guess with the double, I guess maybe that's not unusual? I'm not really sure. Ending the video on an Inkwell piece of garbage. Ooh, Duplicant. Very cool card. Creepy art, man. Salvating Gremlins and a Sickle Slicer. Final thoughts, folks. I guess maybe seven Mythics is normal because the double slots. I'm not really sure. Yeah, but overall, man, I think what's happening is um, I, I think we're going to continue to see the price of the VIP packs, which have been sitting flat for the longest time. There's been a lot of chatter on those VIP packs still at $100 apiece because the amount of value and the unhinged lands in the back and the foil, um, these type of cards, I don't know, showcase or full art, whatever you want to call them. But more importantly, I think if Modern continues to reinflate and the world continues to just to pour money into collectibles and however you want to say it. And 
I, I really think we're going to continue to see an uptick on a lot of these modern cards. I think they got so cheap. We definitely passed the bottoming process. Um, the, the only the, the biggest thing holding it back is still Wizards and credibility. I mean, just collectors and store owners, people just don't trust Wizards, man. The negativity and the... Well, not negativity. It's not negativity. The, the lack of consumer confidence towards Wizards has got to be like an all-time low. Ever since the secret layers and the quantity of secret layers... In the volume of reprints, I mean, seeing the same reprinted card in like a master product, a mystery product, a jumpstart product, in like a core set. Like there were cards that reprinted like three times in 12 months, like really weird things. I think that has really just decimated the credibility and the confidence of people parking money in really buying or, you know, stunting the growth of a lot of newer Magic single cards. Obviously, the sealed product's a different animal, but I, I believe that's overall the perspective right now. I don't know if it will eventually shift from that and everything will kind of level out. But if it does, oh my goodness. I mean, can you imagine if, if Wizards adjusts their attitude and you know communication and transparency with modern and reprints? Oh my goodness. You could see they, they could release triple masters at $1,000 a box and they would make a fortune. You know, Double Masters and Ultimate Masters and VIP would go to... They would double in today's price. You know, and I don't really think it's the cards themselves. I think it's the company's behavior that's really causing a lot of the distortions. So, I don't know. Only time will tell. And coming out of 2020 and stay the course into 2021, we're just going to have to see what happens later this year. That's all I have to say. There's, there's really no way to know, you know, what's going to... How everything's going to unfold going into just the end of the 2021 especially post Modern Horizons 2. That's going to be a really interesting indicator. So that's all I got. Thanks again, John. Hope you enjoyed the video. Everyone, uh, all the fancy schmancy cards heading your way. Everybody have a great day. Remember, life's a beautiful thing. If you're, if you're frustrated, don't let the Timmies, don't let the negativity get you down. A lot of good things out there. You just got to look in the right direction, folks.